Chapter 6, Marriage Equality. When I was younger and much more conservative, the debate surrounding marriage wasn't whether or not same-sex couples should be able to get legally married, rather whether or not people should be allowed to easily get a divorce. It wasn't until my high school years that same-sex marriage was really a topic of discussion. At the time, because I had been taught that God said marriage is one man and one woman, I was opposed to the idea of same-sex marriage. Again, it was my search for the meaning of traditional values that led me to conclude otherwise. As I as mentioned previously, I went to church regularly as a teenager, and even though there are several prominent figures in the Bible who had multiple wives, I was taught in church that was an oddity and a sin, and since laws are supposedly based on a moral code, anything sinful is supposed to be illegal. The thought process goes like this. The Old Testament says homosexuality is a sin, therefore same-sex marriage should be illegal. The Old Testament also says that wearing a garment of mixed cloth is a sin, but it's perfectly legal for two people who wear cotton wool blend clothing to get married, as it is for people who eat seafood or grow multiple crops in the same field. Growing up, I was never taught the fact that government involvement in marriage is a recent development in human civilization, or that the reasons for the first marriage licenses in the United States were to prevent interracial marriages. Even as an adult in 2006, my position on marriage was evolving. At the time, I knew some of the history of marriage licensing laws and would have preferred government not to be involved, but thought as long long as government is involved, we should use the traditional definition, and begrudgingly, I voted for what became Amendment 774 of the Alabama Constitution. To this day, it is the only vote I've cast that I regret. I regret it because I cast a vote in ignorance. While I had been taught that marriage was traditionally one man and one woman, that was incorrect. Until recently, consensual polygamy was a fairly common and accepted practice, and is still common in some parts of the world, which meant that marriage could be a man and multiple women, a woman and multiple men, or multiple men and multiple women. So the position I had been taught as a child was both historically inaccurate and based on the premise that you can legislate morality, something many conservatives try to do while picking and choosing which aspects to enforce. Daniel Weichster of Privatized Marriage writes, Marriage licenses have only existed on any significant scale since 1929. No one in the United States before that was required to have a marriage license in order to practice their fundamental right to marry. The fundamental right to marry. Fundamental rights are not something that should be regulated or licensed. Historically, marriage had been handled by churches, not government. Nowadays, with most people identifying as non-religious, absent government involvement, there would certainly be secular entities willing to solemnize a marriage. Jesse Klein of the National Post writes, The central question is whether the state should be dictating the domestic arrangement of consenting adults. Now, with an informed opinion, I say loudly, no. If any number of consent consenting adults wish to get married, they should be allowed to do so as long as the relationship remains consensual. If two people wish to get married and either partner wishes to bring another person into the relationship, they should legally be allowed to do so as long as the relationship remains consensual. What then of marriage licensing? A fundamental right, such as the right to marry, is not something that should be regulated or licensed. In other words, get the government out of the marriage business. Getting government out of the business of issuing, and in most cases, requiring a marriage license will be a challenge because governments don't like giving up power it has, nor does government like losing revenue sources once obtained. Providing marriage licenses is big business for the state. On average, 2.3 million couples are married per year in the United States, with the average marriage license costing $33.74. That provides a steady stream of income, roughly $77.6 million for those who want to control your life. People have become too accepting of government licensing and regulation. If you don't want government regulating who you can share a Thanksgiving dinner with, if or where you attend church, or who you can date, why then are you willing to accept regulations on your committed relationships?